Hey, welcome back to more History of Team UDF. Yeah, we're doing this on the fly with as little editing as possible, probably, and no real plan for anything that's going to be happening here today. So, yep, uh, today we're going to focus on pieces of writing that I guess I've worked on over the years. I say I guess because for some reason I still can't fathom that I've written this much crap over the years, but I don't know. All right, so... Uh, I'll give you a general idea of how this is going to work. I'll start with the UDF Golden Rules. I actually had documentation on the Golden Rules of the UDF. So that would be back in 2001 or something. No, I, no, I wrote them later than that, but the UDF started in 2001. Uh, I've got a paper from 8th grade where I basically just wrote all my favorite characters in one giant crossover and called it a legend because we had to write either a myth or a legend in English class. And uh, so I just kind of did that, yeah. And then we got a bunch of Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh, so if you're not into that stuff, then I guess you'll be skedaddling afterwards. But yeah, so uh, I guess let's go ahead and have some fun here. It is April 27th, so that means we got to do something special. 2017, I'll try to upload this as soon as it's done. And enjoy your grade A crapola. Let's see what jank we can get here. Let's start, I guess, with uh, the UDF Golden Rules, as I said. You bet I'll be making fun of myself during this because, oh my god, some of this grammar from when I was younger, this is just absolutely atrocious. Okay, so the first thing it says at the top of the document here is exception speech. As in you've been accepted, but it, it's not acceptance, it's exception speech. So that's, that's, good. that's a great start. Hello, and welcome to the UDF, the Universal Domination Federation. You have perhaps been admitted because you are a neat person, have similar interests to the UDF, or I simply like you. Either way, you have now joined a group of crazy sons, of, I mean friends, who share similar interests and goals. Abide by the golden rules, which are overthrown only by the lord, vice lord, and chief of staff if he stops being a prick. Parentheses. Usually when I admit someone, he is. Go figure. Look. A penny. Anyway, have fun and annihilate those bad, I mean, enemies with your new teammates. Joy. Uh, the motto says... The UDF, stealing your hopes and dreams and making them into our own 24-7. The UDF, Waga no Katsuda, which is I, I'm pretty sure is Japanese for I win, back when I was obsessed with actually learning that. And now I don't remember Jack all, so hooray for me. UDF chat, where reason is out to lunch, that was one of my favorites. And the UDF weapons emporium. You may be able to see the reference there. Uh, serving delicious and explosive justice since 2001. And it goes on to say, All UDF rules are 100% true. <laughs> no margin for change. <laughs> then it goes on to say, They can be changed, modified, or misinterpreted purposely by any time, or at any time, by the UDF leader. That would be me. Rule one. Let's play take a shot every time Team UDF steals a reference from someone else. Rule one. Screw the rules. We're the UDF. Rule two. The UDF reserves the right to screw anyone, anytime, anywhere, for any, for whatever reason. Rule three. The UDF members have the right to count or discount any item they see fit. So I guess we're ignoring math as well now. Rule four, all preps are bimbos. And then I had some, uh, I had some choice words here for them that I actually won't be reading. But uh, the end of it says, drive off a cliff into a flaming volcano, so that's, that's nice. Rule five, the UDF takes what it wants, when it wants, as long as it be within reason that the party from which the item is being taken fall under rule two and or three. <laughs> oh my god. Rule six. The UDF members can invent catchphrases or stack catchphrases whenever they wish. I guess it was a thing that we would stack catchphrases back then. And that's it. That's 
a document called the UDF Golden Rules. But uh, boy, was this, uh, what does this document have some edge on it? What is this document dated? Uh, this is dated, oh, but that's not the true date. That's when I converted it to this computer. Can I find the actual date still? I probably can. Let's see. Young Team UDF was grunt without commies. That's right. We're also streaming live on Twitch.tv, so I'll be interacting with chat and responding to things as usual. Come on, there's got to be a... That's not the date it was created. How about date modified? All right, well, it says 2009. I know it's much older than that, though. Oh, well. Or is it? Eh, I don't know. No, because... I wouldn't have written something that stupid in 2009. I was already writing Battlezone, but I was at the end of Battlezone. No, there's no way. I'm going to be taking a drink of water, too, because I'm going to be reading a lot of crap here. All right, let's see. Next up is a story that... Let's see, I'm going to wager... I'm going to wager I was in ninth grade for this... Okay, so let me go in... Let me go in chronological order here. Let me do the eighth grade report first. The book that I called Skies of Arcadia. What an original title. My goodness. Oh, no, wait, hold on. I called it Skies of Arcadia Legends Earth. That made it That made it really original, right, everybody? I even titled the paper by saying, An original remake. What the flid does that even mean? My god. <laughs> what does that even mean? An original remake. Shut up, past self. Alright. It opens with, I apologize if this isn't what you wanted for the assignment, but this was the best I could come up with. Okay, so again, to recap here. The idea was that we had to write a myth or a legend. There was one other genre, I can't remember what it, what it was. A myth, legend, what else goes with those two things? Darn. I'm making my 8th grade English teacher cry right now, I suppose. Alright, but, uh... So I had no idea what I wanted to write, and I didn't want to use many of, like, the Greek mythology characters, so I just decided, let's take as many things as I like and throw it together. Epic. That's the one, Archaea. That's the one. Epic. Oh, Violet also got it. Scrolled up a little too fast. Actually, why is chat positioned this way? Hold on. This is horribly inconvenient. There we go. Okay. All right. Here we go, everybody. An original remake, Skies of Arcadia Legends Earth. God dang it. Here we start off with uh, some really good research here. Uh, 22 AD in Zeus's chamber. Or whatever the flit, I guess. In Zeus's chamber, Zeus had just chosen four more gods to help him destroy an evil haunting the United States, or Terra. <laughs> T-E-R-A. As it was known back then. <laughs> I got a 9 out of 10 on this assignment. And this is how it opens. <laughs> Zeus's door opened and he walked into a large room where the other gods and goddesses were. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Zeus just walks in. Hello, everyone. I would like to introduce you... To our newest gods. Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't look at this beforehand. I didn't realize I was going to get hysterical. Okay, hold on. Hello, everyone. I would like to introduce to you our newest and youngest gods. Alright, are you ready? Are you still playing the drinking game? Obelisk, Osiris, Vice, and Astron. Astron's the only name here I don't recognize. The gods walked in. Vice, a normal human carbon, that's a reference by the way, had a pruple, not purple, pruple, clear eye patch. Remember everybody, you got a 9 out of 10 on this. Obelisk was a giant blue warrior with a 6 foot silver sword. Osiris was a 20 foot red sky dragon with two sets of teeth above and below each other. Did you know that's how sets of teeth work? That one has to be above and one has to be below. Astron had a black cloak and couldn't be seen. <coughs> Greetings, I am Vice, the leader of these other three. 
We can't. Oh, God. We come from the Lilat system. We we are here to help keep peace and order to your earth, Vice said. Hello, I am Obelisk the Tormentor. I torture all evil things with my giant silver sword. I was originally was born in Elysium in the Braxis system. That's Three references. <laughs> the other two kept quiet. Zeus assigned them to guard Earth. Zeus would have the other gods observe them, especially his son, Hercules. <laughs> On Earth, the four gods were introduced to Lava Pool, a town in the Midwest. They were guarded by a princess named Fina. Again. Oh, that's actually only two references. Okay. Welcome to the town of Lava Pool. Fina greeted them. I am the princess only known as Fina. <laughs> Such redundant crap. I am the guardian of Lava Pool. I have defended this land. I hope you're ready for this. I have defended this land against the mighty evil NME. Cyrus looked puzzled. He raised one set of teeth. NME? What the heck is that? Fina pulled out a crystal. It shined bright blue. NME is a dark spirit from the Taronis system that travels from galaxy to galaxy, collecting treasures of the worlds. He came to Earth because of this crystal. It's called the Water Jewel. There are three other crystals called the Earth Stone, Wind Jade, and Fire Ruby. NME has already gotten the three other crystals. He's declared war on this planet. Zeus and the other gods have helped us defend from their latest attacks, but lately our army sucks. <laughs> We're trying to make a peace treaty, but NME demands we give him the crystal so he can destroy the Earth and move on to defeat other galaxies, as though I'm calling Earth a galaxy here, apparently. Zeus said he would send four mighty warriors to help us. Are you those warriors? Astron then spoke. Yes, Obelisk and I are master swordsmen's, and Osiris and Vice are some of the greatest spellcasters in the universe. Now, this makes no sense, be well, I mean, besides the obvious crap, but Vice used cutlasses in skies, so I don't know what the heck I was doing here. Excellent, Fina yelled. This is good. You can help us defeat NME. Yes, of course. I mean, what kind of heroes would we be if we didn't help the good guys, Obelisk asked. Ha! Ha! I guess you're right, Fina laughed. By the way, your doesn't have the apostrophe E. No, we're asking, Vice said. Oh, uh, not very good ones? Darn straight, Vice added. Meanwhile, in a dark cavern where present-day Washington is... <coughs> Bola, Bola, where is that idiot? A dark figure roamed the cave. He was dressed in black metal armor. A voice replied, You say something, Claymore? Okay. In parentheses, I have, This is the correct spelling for him. But it wasn't! Claymore's name has a Y in it, and I chose not to put the Y for some reason. Did you say something, Claymore? Get with it, Bola. Don't you want to be the one to help Master NME get the treasure? No. I got enough money to keep me living the good life for a long time. Ah. You take care of those four new warriors Zeus has hired. I'm going to check out another territory. You make sure that the crystal is indeed hidden in Lava Pool. We'll steal it later. Okay, wouldn't want to get in the way of you and your treasure. Bola disappeared into thin air. So almost word for word, besides the fact that it was using my story, this is pretty much how their introduction cutscene goes in Mega Man Legends 2. Like, pretty much how the... Alright. You get the idea, it sucks. Back in Lava Pool. Fina came up to Vice. You seem familiar for some reason. Vice turned around. Yeah, everyone says that. Oh, anyway, I was wondering where the crystal is. Um, you have it. Oh, sorry. Fina left the room. That's the end of the scene! What the heck? Outside, Obelisk was talking to a villager. So, you're saying you like my sword? 
<laughs> yes, said the villager. It's very big. Do you think I could try it? Of course not. This is a true warrior's sword. It is not to be used by anyone except me. Oh, sorry, sir. Ah, yelled another villager. The villager fell, dead. He was stabbed in the back by a dark sphere with spikes. Who's there? asked Obelisk. My name is Komori Bola, but you'd best call me Bola, or else. It was Bola. <laughs> it was Bola, who was scheming with Claymore about the treasure. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? We are both warriors here, continued Bola. I was thinking that I'd, oh, well, challenge, challenge you to a duel. A duel of swordsmen? Precisely. The first warrior to fall is defeated, did you know that, and must spend the rest of existence in heck. Heck? I thought it was quiet. A little kid might be reading this. Ooh, oh, this, oh. They went to a battlefield called Lava Battlefield. <laughs> Oh, no, I also had to explain it, apparently. They called it this because of the fire below the field! They each drew their swords, ready for a duel. No crowd had gathered, for a legend told that if anyone should enter the battlefield and they weren't a warrior, they'd be burned by the scorching inferno beneath the battlefield. All right. They rushed at each other with incredible speed, exclamation mark. They drew their weapons and put them out. Okay. But Bolo was known as a cheater and threw a spiked sphere at Obelisk, tripping him. Instantly. Bola picked up Obelisk's sword and jammed it into his back. Better days, eh? Bola asked, laughing. Tell me how it is down there. Ha 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 ha. Bola disappeared. Vice, Osiris, and Astron ran into the battlefield after they heard Obelisk's horrifying cry. Uh, Vice was the first to see Obelisk's dead body. Obelisk! he cried. Osiris dragged Vice away. My best friend, I will kill whosoever did this to my buddy. Osiris flew off in rage to kill Bola. Astron then yelled, Osiris, we need to stay together. Alone we'll be killed. It was too late, though. Osiris had flown clear out of range. Lava pool, nighttime. Princess Fina was sleeping quietly when someone silently, silently broke the window open. All right. Heh, <laughs> this must be the place, Claymore said. Yeah, I hear that the crystal is protected by some code, Bola said, 22 AD. Protected by a code. Master NME said it was in the closet. God. What the heck? They opened the closet. Zeus, ju Zeus jumped out and yelled. What? Fina woke up screaming. Zeus grabbed Bola and Claymore by the neck and threw them with great force out of the window. <laughs> Police! Police ran into the scene. What the... Zeus came out of the house. Men, arrest these two and reclaim the three crystals. They won't be bothering us anymore. <laughs> What's so <up>, Flynn? <laughs> Claymore broke loose and tried to stab Zeus. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna work. But Vice ran onto the scene and smacked him in the face. Ow, little... Claymore and Bolo were thrown in jail and eventually forced to spend... <laughs> Let me start over. Claymore and Bolo were thrown in jail and eventually forced to spend their life in space. A mysterious underground base. Is this who I think... Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Okay. Those it those idiots, someone yelled. It was the Dark Lord NME. He was not happy that his best warriors had been defeated and that Lava Pool had gotten back their three crystals. It's in quotations for some reason. 
Someone walked in. Sir, the dark deed you requested is done. Good job, Teasel. The man was dressed in green metallic armor. Metallic has one L for some reason. His name was Teasel Bon. He had a sister named Tron, who I don't even think is in this story. They were known as the Bonds, famed pirates. They had helped Bola and Claymore claim the other three crystals. The deed Teasel was referring to was killing Osiris. I guess Osiris died off screen. Teasel, I need a favor of you. This vice. Kill him and all who oppose. Use the wave motion cannon to do so. Get that crystal. Yes, master, Teasel said. He left the room with a giant cannon. 22 AD, everybody. <laughs> Lava pool the next day. Boom! An explosion was heard. Boom! A building blew up. Boom! Villagers screamed. Havoc wrecked the town. Tiesel was firing his new weapon. Vice! Astron! Fina yelled as she ran into their room in a hotel. A strange man is destroying the town. He's here to get the four crystals. What? Over our dead bodies. Let's go, yelled Vice. He drew his sword, ready for battle. In a house, Teasel stuck up a bank attendant and demanded the four crystals. How the flint would this work? Vice and Astron came in. Halt, yelled Astron. He charged at Teasel. I think you should get a life, Teasel said as he activated the cannon. The blast sliced Astron right in half. Okay, well, so much for him. No, Astron, Vice yelled. Teasel put the gun on Vice. Take this! He fired the wave motion cannon. Vice sliced his sword at the blast, cutting the blast in half and dodging it completely. Nice job, but I won't miss again. Fire! This time, Vice threw his sword into the cannon. It fired, but the sword jammed the cannon, and a large explosion from a misfire finished Teasel's life. Next time, don't get in my way, Vice yelled. What a great hero. <laughs> Everyone knew that there was no next time for Diesel Bob. <laughs> oh, she is in the story. Why, you, scowled a voice. It was Teasel's sister, Trogbon, and she was extremely angry. Two, two exclamation marks. I will kill you for what you did to my brother. A movement was heard, okay, under the rubble of destruction. Teasel emerged! The wave motion cannon unharmed. Ha 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 laughed Teasel. Vice starred in horror, not stared, starred in horror. How did Teasel possibly survive that blast? But then, another Teasel appeared, and another! Teasel laughed. Uh, he also clapped. Uh... Well, nice job there, Vice, but you've only destroyed a mere clone. You see, Master NME knew you'd discover a weak point in my wave motion cannon, so he took the liberty to create three clones of me. You've destroyed one. Can you beat the real me before the clones get to you? All three Teasels lunged right at Vice. Vice just stood there. The Teasels pulled out swords and let him have it. Vice fell into three pieces. There was a note on the ground. Astron picked it up, or uh, Teasel picked it up and read it out loud. I like clones too. Here's a present. Teasel and Tron looked on the ground and saw a bomb. Boom! Four exclamation marks. Teasel and Tron were blown sky high. Vice came in with a remote control. 22 AD. Fina came up. Where and how did you get that? Oh my god, I actually had an explanation for this? What the flid? Vice laughed. You forget, I come from a universe hundreds of years ahead of this world. I use these things all the time. I can't believe I actually had an explanation for that. Holy flid. Wow, too bad you didn't think of that before he killed Astron. <laughs> 
yeah, it really sucks that I'm the only one left in the four who Zeus chose to save this world. Uh, there's a spelling for your rainstorm. Hopefully you can end this war. Yeah. Uh, don't count on that, a voice called. It was the darkness wind, Zeratul. He had helped Hercules and Zeus a couple times, but that was all a plot to turn evil and kill Zeus and Hercules. <laughs> However, a swordsman called Cain had stopped him. Zeratul and Cain eventually became partners, but Vice had killed Cain 50 Earth years ago. I see you... I see you're as strong as ever, Vice. Don't think that'll help you defeat NME. He's the best swordsman ever. Vice was confused. But I thought you were the best swords. Oh my god! No offense to Zeus, but you are NME! Ha ha ha, yes. I was hoping you'd figure it out sooner or later. You see, I prefer to end this little feud. My pirates and I would much rather raid other galaxies more advanced than this crappy world. I'm leaving now, Vice. <laughs> See you around. Zeratul went to shake Vice's hand in a treaty form. What the flit does that mean? Vice put out his hand. With his other hand, Zeratul drew his deadly sword, known only as the Warp Blade and struck Vice in the stomach. Vice fell to his knees, then collapsed. Villager screams were overrun by laughs by Zeratul, and he disappeared into thin air. These people are as bad at their job as the heroes in Legend of Heroes. Good God. At the hospital, Lava Pool. Look, oh my, come on. All right. Word for word, this says, luckily for all the readers of this, Vice wasn't killed. Fina was helping Vice regain his strength. A doctor came in. Okay, Vice, time for your injection. Vice replied, That's great, Doc. Wait a minute. I never told you my name. The doctor picked Vice up by the neck. You're darn straight you didn't. The doctor threw Vice into the wall and hurled Fina out the window. <laughs> All right. The doctor ripped off his costume. Kane! Vice yelled in amazement. I thought I killed you in the coal mines. Kane's eyes glowed bright red. That's right, Vice. It's me, the big red destroyer, Kane. I've come back to put you out of your misery. And to start, I think I'm going to end this world's history by destroying the four crystals. Vice weakly got up. No! You can't do that! If the crystals are destroyed, the gods will die, and the world will implode and disintegrate. I guess all at the same time. Well then, it's time to pay the piper. Kane jumped out the broken window, about a five-story drop, and picked up Fina by her hair. Take this! He whipped Fina into the wall. My god. Now, more crystals, please. He stole the earth stone from Fina and whipped it at the ground, destroying it instantly. Where's your gods now, Vice, huh? He yelled as he destroyed the water jewel. Let's see, this world doesn't need wind. He picked up the wind jade and got ready to destroy it. Fina got up and threw herself on him. Everyone's just getting thrown in this freaking... Fina got up and threw herself on him to make him drop the crystal. Fina got the fire ruby and smacked Kane across the face with it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Back inside the hospital, Vice finally had gotten up. He looked out the window. Oh god, Fina's got no chance out there with me. Vice picked up his sword. Why do I have two... Why do I have two stars here? Huh. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm coming, Vice yelled. Zeratul broke in through the ceiling. I don't think so. He drew his sword and began a sword fight with Vice. Sword fight is in quotes for some reason. Vice and Zeratul exchanged blows, breaking each other's strengths. Vice eventually fell weakly. Zeratul laughed. 
I was always better, Vice. Vice weakly laughed. A stroke of energy revealed that Zeratul had taken out a clone. <laughs> of course. Vice flew in the window and jammed his sword in Zeratul's head. Not in this case, Vice said. Zeratul looked at himself in horror. He remembered how he had done the exact same thing to Vice's sister 100 Earth years ago. Oh my god, this reference. Today's bonus points, no, okay, today's bonus points go to whoever knows what the reference is. For revenge, Vice? Vice laughed. No, for me. Vice kicked Zeratul out the window. Vice jumped out the broken window to save Fina, who was now being attacked by Kane. This ends now, Kane said. He got ready to destroy the Wind Jade because he had broken the Fire Ruby over Fina's head. He looked up, and that was the last thing he did, because Vice again jammed his sword in Kane's head. <laughs> Just as he did those many years ago. Ah, ah, Vice, Zeratul's supposed to be finishing you. Kane turned to see his fallen friend. N no! Vice grabbed Kane by the face. This time, you stay dead, got it? Good. <laughs> He threw Kane down to die. 23 AD. Mount Olympus. Modern Warfare 2. I'm taking away points for that answer. No. Zeus was getting ready to make Vice an official god. I'm sure that's inconsistent, but I just... I don't care enough to scroll back. Screw that. I proudly present Vice, the golden warrior of the gods. Vice came out to a platform and yelled loudly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Arkea's got it, Goldeneye. Thank you all. However, I cannot accept this honor. I do not want to be a god. The crowd booed. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have galaxies. Oh, wait, wait. I think I skipped a line. I'm sorry, but I save galaxies for a living and kill my rivals. <laughs> well, I'm, I must continue. To follow the evil enemy group. In parentheses, by the way, <laughs> enemy stands for Nightmare Enterprises. Wow! I, I can't believe it! Therefore, I will continue to follow the enemy follower. <laughs> I must now travel to the system they call Ire. I bid you farewell. Fina came up to Vice. Please take me with you. I won't be a bother. I will just remake the crystals. <laughs> Nothing more. Vice whistled for his ship. Very well, Fina. He, he, when did he get a ship? Very well, Fina. We can sail the we can sail the wrong sail the universes together. It doesn't ma oh! <laughs> Oh my god, I actually wrote this. We can sail the universes together. It doesn't matter now what happens. I will never give up the fight. As long as the voices inside drive me to run and fight, it doesn't matter who is wrong and who is right. Vice would always say that statement after he had saved a world. It was habit. Vice and Fina hoped, oh hopped, hopped on the ship, called the Gessel Shaft, oh my god, and flew away to bigger and brighter adventures. To be continued. I am so angry right now with my 8th grade self. Holy flid, this crap. I don't even believe half of that. Wow. Wow. I got a 9 out of 10 for this, everybody. I got a 9 out of 10 for this. So for those of you who didn't get it, those were the lyrics to um, one of the Sonic Adventure songs. <sighs> what was the only thing I didn't have in here? Mario and Sonic, pretty much. Oh, I guess I didn't have Zelda. Oh, by the way, it's all Quest 64. That's basically it. 
That teacher needs to be fired promptly, says Rainstorm. Well, guess what? She was, after this year, actually fired. She was caught smoking with a short gentleman outside the building. And was just generally a terrible person. She was fired. <laughs> so there you go, Rainstorm. You got it. Oh, my God. Let's never open that again. The worst part, other students probably turned in worse crap than this. Well, they must have if I got a freaking 9 out of 10. All right, everybody. Let's go, uh... Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> so I can only wager... So the way I would do things is I would describe them by the grade that they were in. So I can only assume I wrote this in ninth grade because I describe some of the some of the characters in it as eighth graders. All right, rainstorm made us something. Let's put it on screen here. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's put this on screen. Where's the thing? There you go, everybody. Rainstorm may us a uh, grand old, grand old picture here. <laughs> the original crew. Oh dear. Shadow Wish remembers writing a creation story for one of your, for one of her high school English classes. Peeps found it very believable. Oh, hey, Seb is in here. Hey, Seb, we might do the first episode of Battlezone tonight if I don't wear myself out first. How's it going, buddy? All right. So I would occasionally get bored and write myself little stories in class whenever we had internet. I'm guessing this is one of them. Well, here we go. Setting. Spe oh, what was this called? Ultimate Hero Adventures. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Let's check it out. This one's really short, though, because it's in script format, mostly, from what I can tell. Also, Sabata's in the story. Isn't that exciting? You guys get to hear about Sabata. All right. Setting. Spanish class. Mr. Gustus had just completed the task of passing back the tests. Such exciting openings. It was about 1.45, so there wasn't much time left for class. Mr. Gustus says, Well, it seems we're almost out of time for the day, so have fun. <laughs> the bell rings, and everybody runs out of the room. Brian is heading towards room three. Mrs. Gross's honors geometry class. Okay, yeah, this is ninth grade then, because I took geometry in ninth grade. Brian entered the room and saw Andy Walker unpacking his stuff for class. Brian says, hey. Andy says, hey. Brian says, hi, Mrs. Gross. Mrs. Gross says, hi, Brian. <laughs> Mrs. Gross leaves to, and goes to stand outside in the hall. Tom comes in after a while. Tom says, sup, mon? Andy says, Tom, you're not Jamaican. Tom says, meh. Amy, Nathan, and Samantha come in next. The lights go out for a while. They come back on shortly, though. <laughs> Everybody ignores it. <laughs> okay. The rest... The rest of the people come into the room, and Mrs. Gross closes the door. Uh, Mrs. Gross says, Come on, guys. Let's stay in our seats, huh? All, all, A-L-L, -L, says, No! Mrs. Gross makes the face, the one face, where you, you do a hyphen, a period, and a hyphen. After a while, the lights go out again. This time, there's a thunderstorm outside all of a sudden. The lights are out for a while. Footsteps are... <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Okay. Footsteps are heard around the room and nobody can see. 
A faint scream is heard, and then footsteps running out of the room. The lights are still out. They suddenly come back on. <laughs> Mrs. Gross says, Hmm, well, let's continue. <laughs> Samantha says, Four exclamation marks. Amy is gone. All. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Bri <laughs> Brian says, Holy, and gets cut off. Dan says, Wow, that's crazy. Tom says, shut up, Dan. Mrs. Gross says, okay, nobody panic. The room is in a frenzy within five seconds. Mrs. Gross does the face again, hyphen, period, hyphen. And then Brian laughs. The lights go out again. Everybody braces themselves, for they could be next. Suddenly, lightning strikes, and a phantom-looking creature appears. Everybody freaks out. Question mark says, Samantha, you're next. Samantha says, ah... Craig, Greg, I guess, not Craig, Greg, jumps in the way. The phantom-looking thing lungs at him, not lunges, lungs, according to my spelling. Suddenly, a warp appears, and two more creatures jump out and knock the phantom back. They, <laughs> they communicate in a strange language. Brian says it can't be. Andy says it is. Alan says it's. Brian says it's Goldberg. Goldberg's music hits. The announcer walks up. The following fight thingy is scheduled for however long it takes before one person loses it. On the roof, weighing 285 pounds, Goldberg the Phantom and his opponents and a combined weight of cough, cough, cough. Brian, Nathan, George, and Tom. George says, Ha! Let me take care of this, guys. I have it all under control. He turns around and gets speared for the three count. The announcer announces that George has been eliminated. Brian does the little face thing. Tom laughs. Nathan says, I'm a Star Wars nerd, so I'll use my lightsaber. He draws it. Brian says, where in the heck did that come from? Link says, it's a story, so it doesn't have to make sense. Brian says, where the F is everybody coming from? Mario shrugs and turns around into a spear. Goldberg yells, you're next. Alfonso says, dispose of them. Skies of Arcadia reference. Goldberg yells, thunder of fury. And then he spears Alfonso. Or no, he spears all. The announcer says, all is eliminated. Brian says, what the F? Yugi says, mind crush. Yami does a much larger version of the face. Tom yells, let's finish the darn match. Nathan jumps at Goldberg with a saber. It has no effect, smiley face. Nathan yells, what the heck? Goldberg says, I'm Goldberg. I don't job to anybody, remember? Nathan says, oh yeah, right. Spear, jackhammer for a three count. Nathan is eliminated. Tom says, I'll take care of him. Goldberg pokes Tom in the arm. One, two, three. Tom is eliminated. Everybody says, ha ha. And then they turn around and do a spear and a jackhammer. The announcer says, everybody is eliminated. Uh, Brian says, okay, it's all up to me. Go get him. Me says, okay, happy face. Spear, jackhammer, one, two, three. Me is eliminated. Brian says, there's only one person who can save us now. Somebody crashes through the window in a cloak. Were they on the roof? <laughs> Why do I care? Brian says, it's him. Goldberg says, you're next. Suplex, backdrop, F5, steel chair shot, low blow. One, two, three, question mark, rips off his cloak. Announcer says, here's your winner, baby Jim. Brock Lesnar says, no. The end. That's the end of the story. And it says this has been yet another random movie. <laughs> God dang. What the actual flid. I wrote this, apparently. Oh, there's that. Oh my God. I vaguely remember the baby Jim thing. I think Sabada and I would end a lot of our jokes with baby Jim... Just some random character who would always come up and beat everybody up. I vaguely remember this being a thing.
Because I know that's not just a random reference. That's, like, actually something. Baby Jim. So there's that. And there's Bill Goldberg beating up school kids on a roof and eliminating esoteric names of people. Yeah, alright. Let's close that and never look at it again. <laughs> God dang, dude. Just what the heck. Holy flid. Rainstorm says uh, he had a PowerPoint series about a gerbil who died repeatedly. You want to know what the depressing part about that is? Not the gerbil thing, but thing something that was said earlier in chat. The depressing part about that is the first book in the new card game has a Samantha. I've just made a grave mistake by reading this story with another Samantha in it. This is all just going downhill. Based on a real gerbil, 5th and 6th grade. Oh my god. Well, let's see. Here I've got a... Uh... That's something I wrote when I was 14. It's a, uh, it's a tournament report for Yu-Gi-Oh! So for the, I guess people not in the know, I guess, I don't know. So you play, you play card games and whatever. Um, I guess it still happens pretty often, but then you write like a tournament report on what happened, the cards that you used, some of the highlights of the tournament and everything. It was kind of fun, I guess, but uh, just to give you an idea of the timeline here. The date on this tournament report is October 24th, 2002. So it was three days before my birthday that year. This was uh, apparently a tournament report for Bry's Disintegrator deck. Disintegrator is actually, the spelling is not terrible, come to think of it. I just don't think Disintegrator is an actual word, but let's see. So um, number of people, 33, number around 6. So I'm doing this just for the the history aspect of it because uh, Pharaoh's Servant was brand new. Like, we only had Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, and Magic Ruler, basically. Pharaoh's Servant had just come out. And yeah. So, okay, hello. I have a long history to go through. First, I'll name all the people I know very well and something about them. Oh, but first, if you're ever on Pojo's Message Board... And I had my old username there, Magnumon Rules. I was trying to find the original fanfiction for Yu-Gi-Oh! that I had written under that Magnumon Rules name, and I couldn't find it. And I know it's not on my computer, but I can get you the 2002-2003 one after this. We might read some of that to see how crap it was. It says, I run my fanfiction in the general fanfiction form. Okay, yeah, best friend Jay. He's cool, and he's got a nice Exodia tune deck. Okay. For those of you who actually know what Yu-Gi-Oh! is, my god, this deck that Jay would use. Holy flid. Okay, so how this would work is he would use beatdown cards like La Jin and uh, what else did we even have back then? Seven Colored Fish. Um, Gemini Elf wasn't out yet. What were some other 1800s back then? Okay, so he had beatdown, Summon Skull and things. He used defense monsters like Labyrinth Wall and Giant Soldier of Stone. And he used Toons. And he used Exodia. This was like an 80-card deck back in the day. This was the most ridiculous thing. And it somehow worked. So that's classic Yu-Gi-Oh for you, everybody. Oh, hey, Avalanche. Says his deck specializes in lots of magic trap cards. You can tell it's old because they were still called magic cards. Rival, Mike, Arg. This guy has toasted me every time with magic ruler cards. Arg. Even though I've only faced him once, I know I'll get even with him one day. Another friend, Russell Fields. He won our very first tournament. And I literally mean tournament because for some reason when I was a kid I never used the U in tournament. So tournament... 
This one being our fifth. This was our fifth ever tournament. That's how old this is. He's pretty cool, too. He just takes losing too harshly. Another friend, Josh. He loves his Barrel Dragon Harpy Lady deck. Now, now that um, Pharaoh's Servant is out, he's getting his seven completed. Rival Student. Uh, those of you who are in Battle Zone will uh, you'll get the significance of this name. Justin Singer. Yep. This is the guy who I based Singer off of eventually. And then he just completely turned into his own thing and became Axum Singer. The best, most liked Battle Zone character by the readers. It was all this guy that I just took the name from. Arg. This guy is a servant to Mike. Mike made Justin's deck, taught him how to play, and schools him every day of the week. Justin likes a Hane Hane combo deck. That's right, Seb. He did become a legend. The name Axum Singer is like the most recognized name in my old stuff. Store manager, Rosemary. She's cool. She lets me help out around sometimes. Most of the time, she makes me bored. <laughs> She lets me referee for matches when I draw a bye. She gives me a lot of free time to make up for non-existent prizes, like she'll name a card, and if anyone's dueling with that card, they get a free pack. Also, if there are two duelists with the same name, like Justin versus Justin, they get a free pack. Too bad I'm the only Brian there, darn. Now for my deck and the tournament matches. Hey, I'm going to bore you by reading the deck, just so you get an idea of where this was in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Franchise, I guess I don't know. So I ran Exodia, three Summon Skull, two Jirai Gomo, three Dark Elf, my goodness, the life points. One the Fiend Mega Cyber, one Mr. Volcano, one La Jin, one Harpy's Brother, uh, one Seven Colored Fish, one Senju of the Thousand Hands, one Sonic Bird, one Invader of the Throne, one Maha Vilo, uh, two Sangin, two Witch of the Black Forest, and one Relinquished, which was my ace card back in the day. Relinquished. <laughs> Come a long way, haven't we? One Pot of Greed, Dark Hole, Swords Revealing Light, Raigeki, Change of Heart, Rush Recklessly, Black Pendant, three Malevolent Nuzzler, one Megamorph, uh, Messenger of Peace, Black Illusion Ritual, Stop Defense, two D-Spell, yeah, D-Spell, my god. One Remove Trap, one Monster Reborn, one Nobleman of Extermination, two Trap Hole, one Solomon's Law Book. I have no idea why I ran this. It didn't even do anything. Solomon's Law Book was just a trap card to skip to your next standby phase. There's no point! There's nothing in here that uses the standby phase! So stupid. Anyway, one Robin Goblin, two Magic Jammer, one Seven Tools of the Bandit, two Solemn Judgment, and one Mirror Force. Huh. Tournament matches. Okay, this is the fun part. After realizing that our store had Pharaoh's Servant two months before most stores... God, was it really that... Far in advance, that can't be right. I must have been exaggerating. I bought some packs. That's when I got my Nobleman Magic Card and my Mega Cyber. I throw them in. My friend Jay came in, we free dueled, then the tourney began. My first opponent was a kid named Miles. He went first, he played a seven colored fish. I throw out my Senju God combined with a malevolent Nuzzler. He used a sword of deep seated and attacked. I flipped a rush recklessly. From then on down, I crushed him. He did get his Sangha of the Thunder out, which I mirror-forced. Heh heh heh. Game, set, and match. Yeah, I remember the retrain of Rush Recklessly. It surprisingly doesn't do it. It just destroys beasts or something, though, doesn't it? It's like it's meant for the destruction beast thing. Anyway, uh, looks like I beat him. Oh, round two. He went first again. He actually got out some of his Gate Guardian parts. He got me down pretty far, but then my Mirror Force kicked in. Threw out my summon skulls. He tried to mirror force me, but my seven tools covered, covered the match pretty well. He was out of monsters and gave up with 3,300 life points left. Match two versus Devin. Man, I don't know how this kid won. He tried to play red eyes on the first turn. I schooled him both times. He didn't stand a chance. I got Exodia on the first match. I had to teach him how to tribute... But then he just conceded on the second match because he didn't have his blue eyes in his hand, question mark. Don't ask me why, I haven't the slightest clue. Alright, match three. 
me versus John. No, not Solon, sadly. Okay, this kid really has problems with trap cards. I finished off easily on the first round. He just doesn't know when to spring traps. I got rid of his monsters easily, which he didn't lay anything in defense mode. My fish, Lajin, and Harpy's brother finished this guy easily. He said he felt tired, but I thought he was trying to throw me off my game. I guess he really was tired. Round two. This one actually surprised me. He seemed more awake when he remembered that we had to play best two out of three. I had my Maha Vilo. Vilio? I'll say Vilio, that sounds more correct. Maha Vilio combined with Black Pendant and Nuzzler for 3750 attack. He stole it with change of heart. I still remember this freaking duel. Like, even though it was 2002, he stole my freaking car with change of heart. He attacked me directly with his monsters for 7850. Luckily, on my next turn, I played Megamorph to boost it to 8,000. I attacked his seven colored fish, wiping the floor with him. He switched his summon skull to defense mode and his other monsters. I drew stop defense and blew his skull away. That was the entire duel. Pre quarterfinals. I walked around and was watching free play. I looked at that Mike Kid's score sheet. He didn't lose a single life point in any game so far. So, this guy had a habit of not losing life points. The first time he ever came to the store, I fought him in the first round and lost. But he told me that I was the only one who damaged his life points the entire day. So this guy made a habit out of just bringing in a score sheet and then not having to use it ever. He didn't lose a single life point in any game so far. Ah, hopefully someone would eliminate him before he got to the finals because I didn't really want to face him. He had the quickest deck I'd ever seen. He always somehow got his Magicians of Faith to revive Pot of Greeds and his Snatch Steel. His deck freaking ruled! I saw Jay and Russell finish their match at the time limit. Jay just won with Exodia. They had to flip a coin to see who would win. Russell, our current champion, was out before he could get in the top four for his 50 points. I think this, this had to do with the Duelist Kingdom thing that they did back then. The thing that I won my trophy from. Russell offered his tournament de uh, oh, his tournament pack in exchange for the win. Jay refused, of course. <laughs> Russell finally got his butt whooped. I guess everyone's got to learn a lesson sometimes. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Quarterfinals, me versus Jay. Oh yeah, finally, I drew my cards. <laughs> okay, it's always fun to face someone else with Exodia. Something you can't say beyond 2003. <laughs> God, man. I already held three pieces. Jay began with his usual defense monster. I, of course, threw out my Harpy's brother, powered by a Nuzzler. After exchanging a few blows, my Harpy's brother's still out. Jay completely forgot about it. I attached another Nuzzler and killed his blue eyes, White Dragon. He started playing defensively. He got his prized defense monsters from Nimble Mamanga and ended up gaining 3,000 life points from me killing them all. Finally got two Summon Skulls out and blew away all three of his defense monsters. All of them were Mystical Elves. Oh, that's right, he ran three Mystical Elves, too. I think Mystical Elf is still his favorite monster ever. He then laughed. Oh, that's right, he played Shadow Ghoul! Anyway, I'm sorry, he played Shadow Ghoul. He counted the number of monsters in his graveyard. My mouth dropped open. I had killed a total of 20 monsters, plus the three he had tributed during the match. So, 23. Shadow Ghoul had 3,900 attack points, and he blew away my Harpy's brother. I switched to defense mode, but then he used a stop defense and knocked out my summon skull. I could only lay one trap card, and he used another stop defense card. I had no choice but to throw out Magic Jammer, but he countered it with seven tools of the bandit and blew away my summon skull. But I drew Exodia for the win. That was round one. Round two, I drew my Harpy's brother again and laid it out along with a face down rush recklessly. He, of course, threw out Jirai Gomo. Jirai Gomo was one of Jay's favorite cards when he first came in. But he lost the coin toss. And I flipped Rush recklessly, so he lost a ton of LP in his first turn. I attacked him directly on my next turn with a Nuzzler. He only had 1,200 points left, and the game had just started. He played defensive for a while. I ended up discarding his Shadow Ghoul with Robin Goblin on the first few moves, so that was out of the question. I reborned it on my side of the field before he could, but ran into a labyrinth wall. Luckily I had a black pendant on my Harpy's brother, and he got his blue eyes out with a soul exchange. 
killing my face down dark elf and another one of his lab wait killing my face down dark elf and another one of his labyrinth walls huh, that's weird wording I must have like stolen one or something from snatch deal or something luckily I trap hold it what <laughs> okay I don't know what any of that is then never mind he had the turn and I drew I needed three pieces of Exodia to win I used stop defense with which drew his shadow wall into attack mode. Okay, so for anyone who gets the significance of that, yes. Jay actually ran Mystical Labyrinth and Shadow Wall in his freaking deck. Nobody in their right mind would have ever done this, but he did. I attacked it and he flipped a Tailor of the Fickle, switching my Nuzzler to my Bla uh, Witch of the Black Forest in defense mode. So he still had a thousand left. He played the Eye of Truth, which gave me a thousand life points since I had a magic card in my hand. He used Remove Trap, two of them, one on my Goblin, the other on his Eye. I had already discarded a piece of his Exodia using Robin Goblin, so he wasn't going to get it back since he doesn't have backup soldiers. He did get his Toon World out, but I magic jammed it. I drew Dark Hole and used it, but he had White Hole to counter it. That's right. We had people in our store who ran White Hole which I forgot about when it got flipped over by the stern mystic. Luckily though, I had my good friend Raigeki by my side. I wasted the rest of his life points. Labyrinth Wall and Shadow Ghoul. No, Rainstorm, the, 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 the wall shadow card that you would summon by playing Magical Labyrinth on Labyrinth Wall. Yeah, that one. The one that you get the combination out of. That literally the only person who I've ever seen legitimately run this. <laughs> Pre-game semifinals. Tried to see if Mike was still in or not. It turned out he won. It would either be Mike versus me or Ben versus me. Ben was the store owner's kid, so I figured he'd add about every card. Turned out that Mike got the buy he wanted. Here I come, Ben. Semifinals, me versus Ben. This match really began and ended in my favor. I got Summon Skull out, proceeded to crush his forces. He stopped me with that annoying Paralysis Potion card from Metal Raiders. He stole my card for two turns, then I destroyed it. Now I got Messenger of Peace out. Through the, main, through the remainder of the game, and I still remember this vividly too, I just endlessly pay for Messenger of Peace while getting defense monsters out. He barely had any monsters to attack with, which he kept running into my Sangins and Witches anyway. He got decked out because he didn't have a single magic removal card in his entire deck for Messenger of Peace. Round two, he got me down really far. I only drew cards such as Magic Jammer and Trap Hole, which he kept countering. Arg. But however, how lucky for me to have drawn Messenger of Peace once more. He threw down his cards and gave up since we only had three minutes and he didn't have a single thing to destroy my Messenger of Peace, so he conceded. Finals, me versus Mike. Oh boy. He opened the match by showing all of his perfect games on his score sheet. Man, this sucked at the beginning. I actually brought him down. Neither of us could believe it, so he continued play. I threw out Relinquished and absorbed a defense monster. He snatched steeled it and I got my points. He destroyed it, though, after his next turn. I countered a trap hole, which he tried to use after destroying my beautiful Maha, uh, my beautiful Maha Valio. I wiped his Magician of Faith in attack mode. I also dealt some direct damage while I was at it. I had about a 5,000 point lead, then he Raigeki'd me and dealt damage. I tried to throw out another monster, but he used Mirror Force when he got the chance. After he wiped my last monster, I got crappy draws and won. Not, I lost. This was before Banless. Yeah, this was before Banless. He could have... Yeah, he could have had MST, he could have had D-Spell. He, there was a lot of things he could have had, but he just he didn't have them. Round two, I got my La Jin out early and began wailing at him. He threw out a spellbinding circle to stop me. He was one of the few guys who actually had a spellbinding circle. That was like what made him really stand out. Is he just he played cards people didn't play. Um, it looks like he's gonna show off some of his unique strategy here later on in the paragraph, so I'll keep going. Threw out a spellbinding circle to stop me. I countered up my Harpy's brother along with Nuzzler. Blasted his man-eater bug, which destroyed me. He used card destruction, destroying my chances of Exodia and Relinquished at the same time. 
He used Mysterious Puppeteer to gain some points, but I blew away everything with Dark Hole. Tossed out a witch in defense mode. He attacked it with his Invader of the Throne, which he got from me by use of Monster Reborn. He used Magician of Faith and Reborn my Jirai Gomo. He lost the coin toss, though. He played his Jirai Gomo and again lost the coin toss. I had a chance to actually finish him and win. He had left a Magician of Faith in attack mode because of the flip. There was no way I could lose. I flipped my Monster Reborn and got back Summon Skull, powered him up with Megamorph, and attacked into Karibo. Oh, he discarded a Karibo to stop me. He then dispelled my Megamorph and finished me off with a beefed up Jirai Gomo. He won the coin toss, not that it matters, but considering I'm the only person all day that gave him a fight, I either really deserve second place in our store, or I got extremely lucky. I'll go with choice one. Oh well. At least Rosemary gave me not one, but two tournament packs. She's cool. Well, I lost, but I think that my new deck modifications will give me the win later. When I get there next week, I'll be able to get a box of Pharaoh's Servant. Come to me, my Thousand Eyes Restrict. Ha 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 ha, sorry. Props. For me getting second place and good cards in the tourney packs. To Jay for showing Russell he's not unbeatable. To Rosemary for doing her best to help out when needed. To Rosemary again for hosting the tournament and allowing me to write the rules for the Star Chip tournaments later. To the Heart of the Cards for endlessly providing me with Harpy's Brother combo. When I've only got one in my deck. Also for helping me draw Exodia in times of need. Slops. For losing to Mike when I had him so close to defeat. Ugh. To Jay for not playing a very smart game of Duel Monsters. <laughs> to Russell for being such a sore loser. To Devin who tried to cheat by playing Red Eyes. I can't go easy on people like you. You're 15 and I'm only 14. That's the end of the tournament report. So that was like my fifth ever tournament. And oh, it was so much fun. The game was just so much fun back in the day. You can still get really good duels now, but... When there weren't, the game just, it wasn't controlled at all by archetypes. There were no archetypes really. Everything was just its own card. That's what I really enjoyed about those days, is you could get someone, like Mike's strength in gaming was he played just crap like Ryukushin Powered, things that had like 1600. He played Mysterious Puppeteer to keep getting life points. He had Man Eater Bugs, Hane Hanes, it was like a really unique strategy for back in the day. But yeah, so that was a tournament report. That was sadly the only tournament report I ever really wrote. Actually, I've got one from 2006. Can I find it really fast, though? 2005, maybe? I just... GX had just started to come out in English, so I think it might be 2005. I don't know if I can find it quick enough to not stall for time, though. Um... Hmm... Uh, I don't see it. I ran the most weird deck, though. Like, my freaking ace card was Fusilier Dragon or something, the dual mode beast. It was that 2800 that you can normal summon without tributing, but it drops down to 14. I played that card as, like, my ace monster during that time. I... God, I don't see it, though. And I know I've seen the... I've seen the tournament port relatively... Hmm. Like, it wasn't overly long ago, but I just... There's so many folders that I would have no idea where I put it. Huh. I'm not finding it, unfortunately. Oh, well. Is it deck thingy? Is this it? No, this isn't it. It's not deck thingy, apparently. Let's see, everybody's talking about uh, Mario Kart 8 now. I'm looking for stuff. Is it in the main folder by any chance? Hmm. Mm, a drat. Doesn't look like it. I should have thought of that beforehand, but I didn't think of it until just now. Oh, well.
Yeah, before the DD Survivor, yeah. God, I ran the most random BS, like freaking Meteor of Destruction, Roulette Barrel, the Dual Mode Beast that I alluded to. What else was in that deck? Oh, the Creator! The Creator was supposed to be my ace monster, but I like barely ever drew it. So it ended up being the, uh, the Dual Mode Beast was my ace card. So I used to do a weird thing where, and it's actually almost a half-decent idea, surprisingly. I've adapted it a few times. Um, the last time I think I did it, though, was 2014 or something. But the idea was basically, I didn't want to write an entire series as a kid. So what I instead did was... I wrote little episode summary paragraphs and that counted as the series. So I like planned out a whole series basically, but the only intent was to write out the episode summaries. And um, the episode summaries that I have for you are for a Digimon story that I was going to write, or m maybe not. Again, maybe I just intended to write these freaking... Uh, episode summaries or whatever and it takes place in season two so the one with um what's his name ken the digimon emperor thing uh what you got there for me amphibious huh the heck is this oh for payday two. Oh, okay i got gotcha. you interesting so, uh, I guess let's read these episode summaries and see if anything... I don't know. <laughs> those first two are, like, really entertaining. But, uh, this is just kind of there. Maybe I'll read the story instead. Nah, we can probably get something stupid out of this. Let's do the, let's do the episode summaries. Got nothing else to do. And when am I ever going to get the chance to do this again? So let's waste time, everybody. All right, new episodes after Black War, Greymon allies with the Digidestined. That's how, I guess that's the setup here. Can I actually throw Exodias, yeah. Okay, actually, hold on. How about we vote in chat? Uh, do you want some Digimon stuff, or do you want me to keep going with Yu-Gi-Oh? Because I've got other Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I've got the old... The old, old fanfiction that I wrote where the UDF are actually the heels, the bad guys. And I've got, um, we can do the first episode of Battle Zone for like really classic reading. And then you can see, if, like, the, for those of you who <laughs> remember how dark Battle Zone actually got, you can remember how just goofy it was at the very beginning. Like, Battlezone was supposed to be a goofy comedy series, and it just 180s partway through, and I just decided, nah, we're gonna, like, write all this really grim stuff. So, uh, I don't know, let me know if you have a preference in chat there. I guess if you're on YouTube, you're waiting for us to solve for time, aren't you? But, uh, I'm too lazy to edit this, so... Yeah. Alright, Seb wants to see the original Yu-Gi-Oh! fic. Which I do have. It's up here. Maybe we could even read all the way through that at some point. Like, God, it's a long series, but the whole thing together just totals 243 pages. It's not like Battle Zone, where one freaking episode is 20 some pages. No, this was short, but only comparatively to the other stuff. Okay, so this was the fanfic that I wrote on Po Joke. I think it's 2002, 2003, maybe 2004. I never quite have this timeline correct in my head. So some things... Eh, let's just do the thing, who cares. Alright. I did this goofy crap where I have Yugi talking to Yami and Yami talking to Yugi with certain, like, notation, I guess. But, I don't know, maybe I'll just do some voices and make up for it. Okay, uh, 
Also, I love this. So, not only do I have the title of the first episode here written twice, but for some reason Jay's old email account is on here. I, I don't know what the heck was... Anyway, so, so there's that. Episode 1, the first tournament. Yeah, we're still spelling it that way, apparently. Departure. Time period. First tournament pre-tourney. Great. Good. Good description. Note. This is an alternate... An alternate story as to what happens after Duelist Kingdom and the Duel Monsters quest thingy. Anyway, yeah. And are you guys ready? It's everyone's favorite thing. We've got times for you. 6.37 a.m. Game Shop. Yugi was sleeping and so is his grandfather. Down below, the Game Shop had been closed for the night, but someone wanted something now. After breaking the window, the theft let himself into the shop. He cloaked himself with a cape that said UDG. Remember, the UDF used to be the UDG. He held a locket in his right hand. He walked around searching for something. Ah, at last, he has found it. He put the item he stole into his backpack and then made a break for it. 11.45 a.m., Yugi's house. Yugi! Yugi! Time to wake up! Yugi's grandfather yelled. Yogi was still sitting around in his room, for he knew this was the day that the tournament for Game King would begin. That uh, was uh, United Devastation Group, but the United and the group were redundant, so I decided to change the G to an F. And then I realized United and Federation were also redundant, so I changed the U to Universal finally, and that's the story of how we got the Universal Domination Federation. Let's see, uh, he had spent the previous night talking with Yami and preparing his deck. Young one, it's time to wake up. Hold on, Yami, it's too early. But Yugi, it's already 11.45. Yugi suddenly sat up. Oh, by the way, some really random trivia for you. This story is the origin of the Cleon voice. Because I used to, I used to do this voice to represent Yami Yugi. And then later on, it became Cleon in Tales from Cyrodiil. So this story actually originates the voice for Cleon. But anyway, there's that. Yugi suddenly sat up, jolting Yami around in his brain. Yugi grabbed his deck and ran downstairs, ate breakfast, and made off to the tournament, which Kaiba Corp is hosting. They now own Duelist Kingdom, where the tourney's being held. Kaiba owns the castle now and is living the good life. Kaiba has fired the Big Five and left them out in the street with nothing but clothes. Well, that's a little bleak. 3.50 p.m., the Duelist Ship. Joey, Yugi, Tay, and Tristan all competed in the tournaments. This would be their second one. Uh, Joey had spotted Yugi and Taya. Sup, guys? He yelled. Hi, Joey, said Yugi. Hey, Taya, have you improved your sucky duck yet? Joey asked. <laughs> Shut up before I smack you in the face. Joey didn't like Taya's response and retreated. He saw a card on the ground. Eh? Joey asked. What's this? It's a golden sword, but it's blank. Why do they always argue? Might as well just do the voice now. Hmm. I wish I knew why. It's kind of weird. Yeah, you're right. A guard on the boat pulled up a microphone and said, All duelists, please get on the boat. We shall now depart for Duelist Kingdom. Taya looked worried. Where could Tristan be? Joey looked around and replied, I don't know. He's probably already on the boat. I am terrible at maintaining this at any point. Oh, my God. Joey's voice is going to suck, everyone. Sorry. Yugi, Joey Wheeler and Taya rushed onto the boat before it left. They received their rooms, C1, C2, C3. Yugi stayed in C1, Joey in C2, and Taya in C3, because I apparently thought this was important information. They didn't see Tristan and wandered around the boat, looking for him. Tristan? Tristan? Yugi yelled. Where could he be? Hmm, I sense that he's not on this boat. Can you see where he is? No. Too much evil energy around the subject of Tristan. But that could only mean... Yes, but how did he find one of us? He probably wants back what's his. Yes. I'll call to you if I can feel anything about it. Hey, Ice Link. So, I'm going to do some commentary on the backstory here as I read this one, because number one, it's so long, and I don't know when we might ever get around to finishing this, if ever. There's surprisingly foreshadowing 
planned out in the story. Like, it's so bad. The, the actual quality of the writing itself is so bad. But somehow, I still had, like, the notion of what a plot twist was and how to plant seeds for future things and everything. I don't know. That's, like, something I've always done. And even in this crappy thing here. Let's get rolling. 1.45 a.m. Saturday morning on the Duelist ship. Yugi just couldn't sleep. He tried to talk to Yami, but Yami was either fast asleep or practicing yoga. Yugi got out of his room and began to walk around the boat. Something zipped behind him and he turned around abruptly only to see nothing. Yugi walked a little faster, afraid that he was being stalked. He once again tried to awaken Yami, but he still couldn't get to him. Then he realized something was missing. He looked around the boat deck where he was, and everything appeared to be the same, trying to think of what could be missing. Then he noticed the part of his neck was cold it normally wasn't. Aha! The Millennium Puzzle! It was gone! Yugi looked throughout the whole upper and lower deck for it. Couldn't seem to find it. He looked in his room, Taya's room, Joey's room, and even some of the vacant rooms. He sat on his bed, wondering what could have happened to it. Then he remembered the zipping by figure on the boat. Pretty tall jacket glasses. He saw more than the shadow of the figure. Something allowed him to see what he, she was wearing too. This freaked Yugi out as he slammed his front and back door loudly and locked it and even moved a couple tables and chairs in front of the door. In her room, Taya woke up suddenly. What in the world was that? Taya thought to herself. She quickly got dressed, pulled out a plant in case she needed to throw something, and left her room. To be continued. <laughs> okay. Episode 2, The Mysterious Forest Game Part 1. I guess I reply. I did that thing fanfiction.net writers do where they, like, reply to people in the freaking story. I said, thank you, and yes, there will be duels. Note, I forgot to mention Yugi got another set of Exodia cards. <laughs> Just, there you go, he's got Exodia back. 2.10, Saturday morning on the duelist ship. Taya exited her room looking around. She knocked on Joey's door, only to hear her cursing and swearing of how much he hated Seto Kaiba. Taya sighed and knocked on Yugi's door. In his room, Yugi freaked without the Millennium Puzzle and hid under his bed, afraid of what was out there. Taya knocked a little harder, afraid that Yugi was hurt or gone or kidnapped, or she couldn't think like that. So she tried opening the door, locked. She knocked harder, and inside, Yugi got on top of the bed and dragged a pillow below the bed with himself and buried himself in it. Okay. Taya tried to open the door and banged down the door. She dropped her plant, which made a loud crashing sound. This scared Yugi even more, and he pulled his duelist deck under the bed with himself as well. Taya got freaked out, wondering why Yugi wouldn't or couldn't hear her, and opened the door. She looked through the peephole and saw the chairs and table blocking the way. Yugi! Yugi, open this darn door now! Open it! Yugi didn't know it was Taya and began shaking. He would have probably been more calm if he had his Millennium Puzzle. Go away! he yelled. I don't have anything you want! Taya began wondering, could Yugi be scared that someone could have... Her thoughts were interrupted by a fast figure that raced past her and disappeared. Yugi, it's me, Taya. Open the door now. This is like three paragraphs we're spending on this freaking door. Knowing who it was, Yugi removed the tables and chairs and opened the door. Taya ran in, slammed the door, and replaced the tables and chairs by putting them back against the door. What is it, Taya? Yugi asked, his face white with fear. I don't know, some kind of f f figure Taya said, her fear also growing. Outside, a figure raced past the ship from the distance. Duelist Kingdom was already in range. They would be there in a good few hours or so. Apparently you can see Duelist Kingdom, but it'll still take a few hours because this boat sucks. The figure stared into the distance. He could see. He could see far, wide. <laughs> His mind was perfect, pure, about the surroundings of him. The figure stared at Yugi's room, sensing the disappearance of his Millennium Item. Then the figure reached into his pocket and pulled out the Millennium Puzzle, able to hear Yami Yugi cursing inside, wondering where he was and who he was with. The figure mumbled some words to the Millennium Puzzle, then put it down and walked away. Suddenly the ship's edges began to shift. 4.36 a.m., Saturday morning, duelist ship. I'm too lazy to check if it was actually Saturday. Yugi and Taya were still hidden well inside C1. Yugi and Taya finally moved everything and opened the door. Yugi had put his duelist deck back on the table. 
Yugi and Taya saw the Millennium Puzzle rolling around on the boat. So just note that, everybody. The villain had the Millennium Puzzle. And then just gave it back. There you go. Taya went to pick it up when the ship began to rumble. Suddenly the ledge of the ship began to fall, allowing the puzzle to fall into the sea. If it rolled too far to the edge. Oh, if. I see. Taya and Yugi tried to pick up the puzzle, but it rolled away. It rolled away! The Millennium Puzzle, everybody. It rolled away. They chased after it, the ship seeming to roll and rock against them. Yugi picked up the puzzle, but the ship jolted to the right, and Yugi slid off the edge of the ship. Help me, Yugi cried out to Taya. By this time, Joey was outside and barely awake, then woke up instantly when he saw Taya trying to lift Yugi up. Hold on, Yugi! Joey yelled. With Joey's help, Taya lifted Yugi and his Millennium Puzzle back to the upper deck entertainment. No, I'm kidding. Okay. We have to... We have to repair all this, Yugi said as he put the puzzle back in around him. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, I actually did the transformation thing in the story. Good for me. Yami emerged from Yugi. Shadow Force! Yami yelled as the edges and floors were replaced and rebuilt on the ship. Th Thanks, Yami, Joey said. Now what? Yami looked into the distance. That island, Duelist Kingdom. Something's not right there. I sense someone there that we know, with three key letters. Three letters? Yugi suddenly remembered watching a security tape of the previous night. The kid who robbed their store, UDG. He knew the letters, but what did they mean? UDG. UDG. UDG, are you sure? Positive. Okay, I've heard of those letters before. It seems to be a lost memory to me, or a forbidden memory. Well, we shall soon find out. 6.50 a.m., Saturday morning, Duelist ship. Attention, Duelists! Hey, remember, this was 2002 or 2003. Bridge series wasn't out yet. I can make that joke. Attention, Duelists! We have now entered the Duelist Kingdom docks. All Duelists, please exit the ships and begin your way to the castle. Another guard said... Yugi, Tay, and Joey hopped off the boat and made their way to the castle. 6.54! <laughs> Saturday morning, Duelist Kingdom, Forest Region. Someone made their way to an arena. The number of the arena read 55. The person set some human traps and hid in the bushes, waiting for... dot dot dot, and then it just goes to the next scene. 7.34 a.m., Duelist Kingdom Castle. Man, we've been waiting here forever, Yugi said to Tay and Joey. A boy approached the three of them. Excuse me, but do you have a card called Ouija Board? The boy asked Yugi. Mm, no, I'm sorry, I've never heard of that one, Yugi replied. Thank you anyway. The boy disappeared into the crowd of duelists. Seto Kaiba appeared on the balcony. Greetings to those from near and far. This is a tournament sponsored by Kaiba Corp. The rules remain the same for Duelist Kingdom, not including the star chips. You shall just duel each other until there's only one duelist left. You will then come inside this castle to grab your prize. A set of Ouija board cards. <laughs> already. Already the inconsistency with the Ouija board. I remember this freaking Ouija board side quest being the most inconsistent drivel in the whole thing. Like, this is just ludicrous. That's all in the same paragraph, by the way. So, by the time I'd finished the paragraph, I changed what was going on with the Ouija board cards. For God's sake, Destiny board in English, but the English wasn't out yet. After Seto declared the start of the tournament, which he was also in, surprise, surprise, Yugi, Tay, and Joey went off to the woods. Man, when I find Tristan, Joey began. It was then that they all remembered Tristan was sick and not attending the tournament which is also inconsistent with what was in the freaking first chapter. Oh my god. Joey and Yugi wanted to have a test duel with each other before they found challengers. They appeared at a dueling arena. It was labeled 55. Uh, inside stars, I, ha I say, I guess to the reader, eh, what the heck, I'll let this one run longer. Okay, Yug, ready? Joey asked his little friend. Suddenly, Taya walked into one of the traps and was hung from a tree. Okay, well, that's, that sounds horribly... That just sounds terrible, but she's not dead. It's just really terrible wording. What the... Hey, yo, guys, little help here? Yugi and Joey inspected the trap. 
It ne it needs a key, Yugi said. <laughs> Mo <laughs> said a voice. Suddenly, the person emerged from the bushes. My name is Tom. I work for my boss, Brian. You have fallen into my traps. Now you must duel me to save your friend. My boss shall walk away from this tournament with the Ouija board card set at his own dis set at his own disposal. What the flit does that mean? Yugi stared hard into this Tom's eyes. Suddenly, he called Yami for help. Yugi! -Oh! Fine, but if I win, you must release Taya from this trap and hand over the key, Yami yelled at Tom. Fine, we duel with 8,000 life points, even though Kaiba just moments earlier said it was duel as kingdom rules. So here, how this went, I think, is it was no tributes, but 8,000 life points for some reason. And the rules just keep changing as the tournament progresses, so get ready for that. Why do I feel the UDF is far more evil now than it ever was? <laughs> uh, Yami had the first move. I shall begin with Curse of Dragon in attack mode. I will lay two of my cards face down on the field. Your turn. For my turn, Her Hercules Beetle in attack mode. It was now that Yami realized the whole field was forest. I will power it further with laser cannon armor. Attack the Curse of Dragon. Yami had lost his points down to 7750 in one turn. Not much, but he was already behind. Hmm, Yami thought. He had three parts of Exodia and summoned Skull in his hand. I want you to, like, when I describe their hands, you should really pay attention because I'm almost certain I didn't keep track of any of this and their hands are, like, physically impossible. So if you're, if you're into finding screw-ups, you need to look no further than when I ever describe cards in someone's hand. I attack you with Summon Skull. Ha! Huh, Tom yelled. I will activate this trap card. Reinforcements! Yami now looked at his score. After the next turn, now down to 5250 life points. In two turns. He wasn't doing too well. However, behind the duelists, Joey and even Taya, stood the mysterious Shadow Man. Mysterious Shadow Man! You may note would have the acronym MSM. Getting ever so closer to Taya, ready to make his move. To be continued. Episode 3 of the Mysterious Forest Game Part 2. 8, 10 a.m., Duelist Kingdom Forest Region. Yami was getting ready to make his next move. He drew a pot of greed and played it. He drew another piece of Exodia and the Dark Magician. Dark Magician, Dark Magic Attack. Tom lost 250 life points, down to 7750. Yami still had 5250. Big insect in defense mode, your move. Dark magic attack. I will also use Gaia the Fierce Knight in attack mode. Gaia, attack his life points. Tom was now drained to 5450. Yeah, there you go, Rainstorm. Yeah, MSM is the same acronym we're using in Arpaga. That's how far these freaking references come, everybody. That's how far all these freaking references are. From freaking 2002 2003. Think heart of the cards, young one. Okay, that way we can draw Exodia. Yes, we shall defeat this menace. Okay. Trust in the cards, young one. Yami declared it was Tom's turn. Tom drew his card and smirked. Ha <laughs> ha, here comes Petite Moth. I will attach the cocoon of evolution. It will soon grow to be the perfectly ultimate Great Moth. Ha 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 8.23 a.m. Saturday. Duelist Kingdom in the Labyrinth Place. He's late, a kid said. <laughs> it will Brian. Not it is Brian. It will Brian. The leader of the UDG. Oh, hey. Apparently this was even further than that, because I have in parentheses here, United Duelist Group. So it was even, like, stupider than that. Flit, what voice do I... Well, he is dueling Yugi, Brian. John. Yeah, as in Solon. So this was before... This was before the feud with Solon started. That's how old this story is, everybody. John, one of Brian's lackeys, said. Why is lackeys capitalized? This is so dumb. And so the next line of dialogue is, This is stupid. How come it takes Tom so long to duel? Amy said... 
Who cares? As long as Yugi's knocked off the silent, we can take home the prize, Brian happily said. Three of them shared an evil laugh. 824. Forest region. Ha! Huh. Oh, wait. Ha! Huh. Another one of your attacks has failed, Yugi. Yami looked at his score, 4650. He had tried to destroy the cocoon with the dark magician and Gaia, but no luck. The cocoon would hatch into the perfectly ultimate great moth in two more turns. Tom drew his card. Ha 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 ha! I used the card face down, your move. Like, this is so just. They would just laugh and then do nothing! Tom seemed anxious for Yugi to attack him again. Let's make this play count. Agreed. Agreed! Okay, Yami said. I shall use the mountain field card, destroying the forest field card. Tom got ticked as his field bonus drifted away. Dark magician, dark magic attack. Tom sneered. Ha! Activate castle walls. Another of Yami's attacks were deflected. Yami got worried he might not break it in time. His only chance was to draw Exodia. Let's see. One more turn, Yugi. Tom sneered. He drew his card. And to make sure my nice cocoon stays alive, I'm attaching a sword of deep seated to my cocoon. Also, since you have Exodia back, I'll use card destruction. So there. Joey said, So you're gonna switch it into attack mode now, big shot? Tom got angry. Shut up! He yelled at Joey. Okay, I'll play Dark Magician Girl in defense mode. I'll also lay two cards face down. Your move. Tom drew and laid three Magic or Trap cards face down. Perfectly ultimate great moth, I summon thee. Attack Gaia the Fierce Knight. Are you ready for this crap? See if you can point out how many errors are in this BS right here. Yami smirked. Not so fast. Activate trap card. Widespread ruins. Tom laughed. Ha! Activate force field. It was Ryoko field. Oh, by the way, now that you've finally seen this, I can make a reference here. My card game will have a card called Force Field that basically just blocks any play made against the, the, the creature. This stems from a mistranslation that Jay and I had from Ryoku Field when it was only out in Japanese and Yu-Gi-Oh! It was called Force Field back then, and via the translation we thought that all you had to do was flip it up and it negates any spell or trap card played. I'm making a card in reference to this mistranslation all the way back there. So many freaking just ancient references, dude. The Team UDF lore is ridiculous. Some of this crap has no business being around as long as it does. Anyway, so Tom activates Force Field. Yami laughed again. Seven tools of the bandit. Tom flipped a card. Solemn judgment. Yami wouldn't allow it. Act activate Cyclo. <laughs> he just used Mystical Space Typhoon. In response to solemn judgment, everybody. So, at our store, we had a huge misconception about a couple things. Number one, we thought quick play cards were spell speed three for a while. We thought that you could just do it whatever the fudge you wanted. And number two, this probably was the case for a lot of stores you know, when Yu-Gi-Oh! started. Everybody's got stories related to this. We thought that destroying a card negated it. So, Yami here is trying to use Mystical Space Typhoon to negate Solemn Judgment. Yeah. Tom sneered one last time. Activate Magic Jammer! Tom, still at 5450, drained Yami Yugi's points down to 3450. And then it says here... As an author's note, wow, what a hassle. I think I got all those combos right. No, just, it's all garbage. Yami drew Okazi and used it. Yeah, he, Yami's just running Okazi here in this story of mine, everybody. 3450 to 4650. You may have destroyed my Gaia the Fierce Knight, but I can still win by playing Reborn the Monster, bringing back my summoned skull that I had to discard in attack mode. Tom was confused. What? Yami sneered and flipped up a card. Also, I shall use Megamorph. Summon Skull. Lightning Strike. Tom yelled, No, my Moth! 3150 life points. Now I switch Dark Magician Girl into attack mode. 
I attack you with both Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, even though clearly my battle phase has already started. I win. <sighs> These next four words. Tom fell anime style. He couldn't believe he lost. He was going to get booted off the island and maybe fired from the UDG because of his loss. He ran off and dropped the key. Yami unlocked Tei and reverted back to his regular form. Wow, what a weird kid, Yugi said, totally in character. Oh, here we go. Here is his first appearance. Well done, the mysterious shadow man MSM said. MSM looked at Yugi, Tei, and Joey in Yugi's Millennium Puzzle. Who are you? Yugi asked. Well, I am a mysterious shadow man, but you already know that. Right now, you don't need to know that. <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure I got that right. But you already know that. Right now, you don't need to know that. I've been looking for you, though, Yugi. Yugi said, me? But why? MSM stared hard into Yugi's eyes. God dang it, Joe. <laughs> Yugi looked past the MSM and continued... What could I possibly have that you want? MSM looked at the Millennium Puzzle. Your Millennium Item. It's very, very powerful, isn't it? Yugi replied, Yes, yes it is. Why do you ask? The MSM went into the bushes and disappeared. 10.24 a.m. Uh, sea region. As in the ocean. Joey had been looking for a duel ever since Yugi won. Taya was making sure that Joey didn't jolt off after someone. Kaiba spotted the crew but ignored them and went off to a main region. Joey found someone. A kid! The kid replied, What do you... Oh, what do you... What do you want? It was John, one of Brian's best lackeys. I challenge you to... Uh... Joey began, but John interrupted him. Yugimoto, that's you. You eliminated Tom, and now my boss, Brian, is furious. Joey pulled John over. I will duel you now, Joey said cold-heartedly. Okay. John pulled himself away. No way. Not now, but you can duel, uh... Yo, Bo, get over here. You have a challenger. A kid named Bo came over and accepted Joey's challenge. They both agreed to play with 2,000 points instead of 8,000. Joey received the first move. John would be watching Bo play. All right, then I start with Masaki the Swordsman in defense mode. I shall lay three cards face down. Go. Bo drew his five cards. God, what was Bo's voice like? It was really like high-pitched and obnoxious, but I don't know if I can do it. Heh. <laughs> well, let's, let's begin with giant jellyfish in, a, in a tag mode. I don't know how to do his voice. Tag Masaki. Joey drew and got nervous. All right, nice move. I'll use not warrior in defense mode. Ha, huh, I'll activate defense paralysis. Jellyfish, attack. <laughs> Bo disintegrated night warrior from the field. Joey was left with 1,600 life points. Joey drew his card, but it was a Wabaku. He couldn't lay monsters, but used Wabaku face down. He was already out of moves. To be continued. Oh my god. I think I'll do this until 9 o'clock, and then I'll deem it stupid enough to not continue. Episode 4, Journey to the Bottom of the Kingdom. I'll lay a card face down, Joey yelled as he looked at his hand. He spotted Copycat. I'll use Copycat and play it as defense paralysis. Yo, move. Well played, Bo said, but not good enough. Another jellyfish in attack mode. I finish you by attacking your life points with everything I've got. Joey looked at Bo and sneered. Hehehe, <laughs> I activate the trap card Wabaku. Bo's attack had been destroyed. All right, let's try this. The Red Eyes Black Dragon. Inferno Fire Blast. Bo was down to 1160 life points, but he had 320 life points because both jellyfish were destroyed. Because why not? Joey was making short work of Bo. Bo drew his card. I can only play water omotics, but I won't give up. Attack! Joey turned to Red Eyes. Inferno Fire Blast! Bo lost zero life points. So, there was a to be continued, and then within the first two paragraphs of the next episode, Joey wins, basically. 
11.45 a.m. Duel this kingdom, normal region, whatever the flib that means. Bo had run away, John disappeared. Joey and Yugi were ready for another battle with the UDG. They made sure nobody was left guarding the boat. What? They saw John with a couple girls walking towards the region where Bandit Keith had locked the crew in the cave in the first Duelist Kingdom tournament. They ran over to see that the boulder had been destroyed. A sign said, UDG Duelist Kingdom Hideout, stay out. Joey and Yugi would take the challenge to go in. Taya would go with them too, to the bottom of Duelist Kingdom. 11.57 a.m. inside the Paradox Brothers room. I'm so freaking bored, Brian yelled. He had not done anything truly evil lately. <laughs> okay. I can't sit here all day doing nothing. Why is it always I who am bored? I'm the best duelist on the team. Amy! Amy! Amy came running in. What is it? She asked him. Brian replied with, We're going to find two poor saps to duel. We have to eliminate these people faster. This isn't working at all. Amy nodded. I agree. We have to eliminate that Yugi kid fast. I mean, he just entered the cave. Brian stood up, almost falling out of his chair. What? Ugh, I know how to get rid of them both. Yo, Jesse, Nathan, come on in here. Brian's two friends, Jesse and Nathan, came into the room. What is it? Nathan asked. You got someone for us to duel? Yo! Joey yelled. Yugi, Tay, and Joey entered the room. I want an... Oh, I want an explanation. I know you... I know who you guys are now. Yugi yelled. yugi -Oh! Yami emerged once more. Yami stared at Brian and the others. Hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, hmm. There's your opponents, Yugi, Joey. Meet Jesse and Nathan. Also, I didn't even spell Nathan's name right. I put an E in it for some reason. What the flit was this crap? <sighs> First, let's have Joey versus Nathan, shall we? Brian pulled out pizza, Pepsi, and popcorn. Joey and Nathan got ready to duel. Joey and Nathan exchanged insults and got their decks ready and drew their five cards. Let's duel, Nathan yelled. He received the first move. Go, Komori Dragon, in attack mode. I shall lay a trap card down. Go. All right, Nathan, let's go, Axe Raider! Attack the Komori Dragon! The dragon was blown to pieces and left Nathan. You fool, Jobs, why? <laughs> no, thanks for the host. Let's see how you deal with my mystic horseman in attack mode. I'll activate Horn of the Unicorn. Nathan was getting ready to launch an attack. Not so fast! I activate my Cyclone card! Joey yelled, No! Nathan said. Brian was enjoying his food and drink. So was Amy. Axe Raider, blow him away! Nathan was down to 1,400 life points. Yami beginning to think that Nathan was scheming something. Except I spelled scheming... S-C-E-M-I-N-G. Nathan drew his card. I'll use seven colored efficient attack mode. Attack Axe Raider. Joey lost 100 points. Wow. Literally, it says wow after an ellipse. Ellipsis. Ellipsis. -is -is -is. Anyway, Joey took his next turn. All right, go Flame Swordsman. I'll use the equipment card Salamandra to strengthen him further. Salamandra Flame Strike. Nathan got mashed, mashed, all the way down to 700 life points. Joey had Nathan on the run already. Nathan drew his card. <laughs> I'll use this card in face down defense mode. Joey got suspicious of the monster that it could be. He drew a reborn the monster card. He laid it face down along with a Wabaku. Flame Swordsman! Salamandra Flame Strike! The face down card turned out to be... Ha! You activated my Millennium Shield! You lose 500 life points! Ha 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 ha, there's more laughing. Joey got blasted to 1400, Nathan still at 700. Joey knew he didn't have a thing in his deck that could destroy it. He had a red-eyes black dragon in his hand. He also had polymerization, but no summoned skull in his deck. He tried to think of a way he could win before getting decked out. Nathan sneering at, sneered at Joey. It's my turn now, Joey, and I'm going to deck you out before you can make a move. Ha 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 ha. Oh, Rainstorm has an original Komori Dragon from Bandai. Wonderful. 
Episode 5, the Defense of Power Kings. You all can stop me whenever you're tired of this jank, too, by the way. 12.12 12 p.m., Paradox Brothers Region. Um, Joey got tense. Could Nathan truly deck him easily? Nathan flipped a monster card. I'll flip the needle worm. Defense mode. Discard the top five cards on the top of your deck. Ha 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 ha. Nathan said to Joey, who discarded. Tiger Axe, Swamp Battle Guard, Lava Battle Guard, Call the Haunted, and Fake Trap are gone. Nathan laughed and declared the end of his turn. Brian came back with more pizza and Coke and Pepsi. Guess he couldn't decide which one. Joey and Nathan glared into each other's eyes, thinking of ways to beat the other, even though Nathan's pretty much got his plan set already. Nathan looked at his hand, Joey looked at his. Then they glanced at their graveyards, then deck, then each other again. The duel was tense. <laughs> God. Joey saw he had the Mask of Darkness in his hand. Nathan looked at his Lajin and other special cards. <laughs> okay. I activate Pot of Greed. I draw my two cards. Now go red eyes, black dragon. Blow away the needle worm. Nathan drew his card. Sneered and laid it down. I'll use Summon Skull in attack mode. Lightning strike the red eyes. Joey flipped Wabaku. What's this? Nathan said as his attack was destroyed. This trap card, Wabaku, deactivates your attack. Joey said. Nathan used D spell and Salamandra and used Horn of Heaven to destroy Summon Skull and Flame Swords. Well, that's a little late. Jeez. All right, I'll use Monster Reborn on your Summon Skull. Nathan looked puzzled at the move Joey had made. And now I'll combine him with my red eyes to play Black Skull Dragon. Molten Fireball Attack. Nathan yelled, No, my Millennium Shield. Nathan looked down at the ground. He was very disappointed in himself. Somehow, Joey had managed to pull off the perfect move. Well, what BS that is. Nathan drew, then his expression ex exchange, uh, changed. rather. Ah, uh, but of course, I'll lay another Millennium Shield in defense mode. And I'll combine him with the Sword of Deep Seated. Your move. <laughs> Oh, no! 3,500! I can't beat that! Joey said. Don't worry, Joe. Don't worry, Joey. We're right behind you, Taya yelled. Brian looked over and laughed. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Joey's going to get decked out no matter how he plays the cards. Yugi didn't know what he meant. <laughs> I'll use the Eye of Truth! Joey yelled. Yeah, Joey's using the Eye of Truth, apparently. Nathan's hand was revealed. It was now why Brian said what he said. Nathan had three paces of Exodia in his hand. Joey had to stop Exodia. But how was a new story? No. No, he has Exodia, Yugi said. I gotta figure out how to stop it, Joey said. He remembered how Yugi got Exodia back. Weevil was forced to buy Yugi another set. <laughs> Weevil wasn't happy at all. My turn, Nathan said. For this turn, I'll lay a monster in defense mode. Your move when you're ready. Five turns later, Nathan still had the same monsters and so did Joey. Joey had laid a Mask of Darkness face down. Joey didn't want to attack the face down monster when he knew Nathan had no reason to lay it face down. Joey had 15 cards left in his deck. I'm sure that just doesn't add up at all. He was getting worried about the face down monster in his deck. He decided to attack the face down monster to get it over with. I'll attack the face down monster! Molten fireball attack! The face down monster turned out to be a Lao Jin. Nathan had stalled Joey, but Joey had fallen for the plan. Haha, ha, I can still manipulate you more, Joey, Nathan said as he drew his card. Nathan sneered. Another piece of Exodia now. Just one more now, and he would defeat Joey once and for all. For my turn, I'll use this card, Raigeki! Joey flipped up a trap card. Ha! I'll negate your trap card with. Or I'm, 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 mag he magic jams it in either case. Nathan was astounded. He could not believe his Raigeki had been blocked. 12.34 p.m. Castle. Seto looked at Mokuba. I can't believe you lost your death message cards, kiddo. Kiddo. I had Seto Kaiba use the word kiddo. Who took them? Mokuba had been beaten up and his death message cards had been stolen. I think someone named John took them, Seto. Kaiba looked angry. He was ready to spring and throw his blue eyes on someone. He got pissed at the fact someone actually dared to beat up his brother. 
He took his deck and started heading toward where Yugi was, because I guess he just knows. Whatever. Okay. So let's see. So first, the Ouija board cards are up for grabs in the tournament. Then some kid wants the Ouija board cards, just asking Yugi. Or I guess flip those two around. And now we've got that Mokuba had the Ouija board cards, but they got stolen. I, I just... These freaking... This freaking plot point. It's like the one thing I remember. Just nothing about it made sense. 1235, back in the Paradox Brothers realm now. It's not even the room anymore. It's a realm, I guess. Nathan drew. He drew the card he needed to win. He used Dark Hole and flipped up. And flipped up. Okay, but Joey flipped White Hole to keep his monsters alive. Nathan's Millennium Shields were blown to pieces. Black Skull Dragon! Attack that Joker's points! Nathan went black. What does that even mean? He couldn't believe he lost. No, my next card was the final piece to Exodia, Nathan yelled. Brian's mouth dropped open. He dropped his popcorn pizza and anything else he had with them. Okay, I just gave up, apparently. Brian threw a fit. What? How could you lose? Oh, there's also this. Do we just arbitrarily switch between Leslie and Amy? This, this time it's Leslie who comes in and challenged Yugi to a duel. Hey, wait, Tay yelled. I'm in this tournament also. I'll duel you. Leslie said, I accept your challenge, Taya Gardner. Taya and Leslie pulled out their decks. Leslie played a deck similar to Maya's deck, because why the flid not? She idolized Maya, but Brian would throw a fit if he knew, so she threw in some fusion monsters. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, alright. I think that's good enough. <laughs> it's to be continued anyway, but you get the gist of it. It was bad. Absolute BS. Nathan became Jubs before you met Jubs. Yeah, there you go. I, I guess. I don't know. Joey Wheeler. He's a god of the things. He's a god of the dark magician. There's no more dark magician. There's so much more crap, though. Like, oh my god. This is episode 6 that I would be starting on for next time. There's 71 of these freaking things. There was supposed to be 100, but I just kind of arbitrarily stopped writing it. That was actually... So this was actually the reason, the fact that this story was unfinished, that I wanted to go back and do Battle Zone because I was so annoyed that I had left my story unfinished. So I decided, okay, Battle Zone is going to be the one that I finish, and that'll be my revenge for not finishing this one. And that is the story of how Battle Zone came about to be, was because I didn't finish this piece of crap right here. So, like, the timeline for my stuff is surprisingly deep, if you, like, actually know all the references and the meaning behind a lot of it. And it shouldn't be nearly as in-depth as it is, but for some reason it is. So yeah, there's references. There's little nods and throwbacks. Some things ongoing. So much freaking stuff, dude. Oh my god. And that was a little snapshot of it, everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, 27th special. And yeah, we'll be coming back with hopefully something else special on the 27th. I don't know if you guys want more stories. We can do more stories. But yeah. Um, it's wing night. So I'm going to get my wings. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.